Welcome to this video. Today we're going to cover off finishing off the second platform on Crosby Garrett Station. We're going to go from this to this. I really hope you do enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe um, if you are enjoying it and feel free to comment anytime. Um, and if you have any suggestions, I look forward to hearing them. So the first thing I've got to do is finish off the back walls. So I'm measuring and cutting the uh, Slater's plastic card to uh, fit, to uh, run along the back wall, attaching with uh, super glue as I go and uh, slowly but surely making my way along the platform. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got to go uh, around a curve. Um, so to be, uh, measure it, um, I've just got this small uh, measuring tape uh, to be able to basically get the exact measurement. Now, another thing I could do is get a piece of string and uh, then put it against a ruler and then you have the measurement. Just completed the uh, tops of the walls as you can see um, runs all the way down on the top uh, now all that's left really are the uh, bits that go on top of the uh, the plinths here just to finish that off and that's pretty much most of the construction the top of the walls are um, the uh, polystyrene strips uh, that are one mil by two mil um, I found they give the perfect uh, size for full of slabs um, to represent the top of the wall and uh, yeah let's uh, get on to the uh, top of the plimps Right now I'm just smoothing off the joints in the platform surface, making ready for the surface finish. A quick look just to see how it looks on the layout. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, is I'm just filling in the little gaps at the bottom. And I'm also going to fill the spins around the little gap lines here uh, with the uh, perfect plastic poly. Now I'm doing this because, I mean, yeah, the cracks, the cracks are really, really small, but you are going to see them. So I'm trying to you fill them in and once the putty starts to uh, dry, you can then uh, manipulate a little bit and it, it looks a bit more like bricks or um, mortar rather than a, a gap. Um, you, although, yes, it's, uh, as I say, it's pretty small, but um, it's just the fine, minor details. And once you paint it, you don't, you know, it really, it really looks a lot better once it's filled in. I don't know if you can see this gap here between the two um, pieces of plastic there. So I'm just going to fill that up um, again with the putty. 
what happens along along the um, base of the platform though you, you add a platform surface sort of a textured surface and that kind of covers everything up anyway but up, and while this is drying I like to go around and kind of use a, a wet finger or something to uh, just to mold it I do have some molding some clay molding tools that I can use as well if needs be As you can see, I've got some uh, mini clay tool sets, so I can um, try and, you know, as it, as it work, as it dries, uh, manipulate it with um, with the tools. Um, it's, it's much easier if the, these are wet as well. thing with doing this is you get the uh, um, you're gonna get the paint is gonna hide a lot of any mistakes you make but you're just trying to fill in the um, just trying to fill in the gaps at the bottom so they don't show um, and uh, yeah make it make it look like a that it doesn't have a hole and disappear back you know, make it more look a bit more realistic now, if I still have um, more gaps that I want to plug with the tools, I can just you know, actually just put it on like this. Just pack it out. Anyway, this worked for me last time and it's kind of I'm sticking with this time. Of course, this can also be hidden. Like I say, once once you put the, the surface on it, it does help to hide it. But um, you know, I guess you could hide it with, by putting some green moss or, you know, just to show growth or overgrown areas at the bottom of the wall or, or something along those lines. So I'm you know, just trying to, there's ways trying to do as best I can um, while, uh, you know, while I'm constructing it. That way I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff at the, the next phase. But it's pretty much getting there. Ready for uh, paint. Right, so just to uh, clean any dust since I've been sanding it or any particles that I don't want, you know, to allow the paint to stick properly. Just giving it a bit of a quick wipe down with some uh, isopropylene alcohol. Uh, so it just picks up, as you can see, pick up the dirt and everything. Uh, so it gives the paint a, a good clean surface to, uh, to bond with. Now with this surface, it's really quite smooth because it's just uh, straight on plastic. I mean, last time I didn't rough it up. Um, for the tarmac paint to stick and it's it's sticking uh, quite well so I'm just going to leave it as is but everything else now is um, I'm going to go once over check make sure I'm happy happy with everything and uh, yeah well, then we're going to go and do uh, the uh, first undercoat of the platform um, okay so as you can see I've set up the uh, table for painting um, and Maybe a modeling table, but I like to keep it as clean as possible. Um, we're gonna prep the surface with uh, surface primer, uh, which is the IDF Israeli sand color. It's give it, gonna give us a nice base coat um, to then uh, add uh, the rest of the paint. There you go, it's half of it, half of it done, um, as you can see. Okay, the next part of the um, process for the platform is I'm gonna tape off all the back walls uh, and the front of the platform, just exposing the uh, top part of the platform, uh, and I'm gonna put the uh, textured paint on it.
Okay, so there we have it. Um, it's all masked off, ready for uh, the next coat of paint. I'm gonna do a gray, gray coat of paint before I put on the um, textured surface. So the paint that I just used to um, put the undercoat on, um, I just got some normal acrylic paint, uh, mixed some black and white together to uh, make the gray, um, then added a bit of water just to thin it down uh, and just uh, applied uh, freely on, on the surface and uh, I'm gonna let that dry. Uh, once that's dry, we can uh, move on to Okay, so now we're going to, uh, now the surface is dry, we're going to apply this uh, MIG asphalt paint. Um, it's acrylic paint, um, just with some bits in it to give it uh, the texture of um, asphalt. Um, it's uh, really, really quite good. Um, I used it on the uh, other platform and uh, liked the effect. So um, we're now, now going to get on with that. So the uh, MIG asphalt paint is really quite messy. You need a uh, rubber glove to apply because we're going to be applying it with our fingers. And um, let's get stuck in. You can see it's uh, pretty thick, but we're just going to rub it on and just spread it all out. Trying to get a nice thin, thin layer of this uh, textured paint. As you can see, it really does cover up most of the paint. So you could probably skip the uh, the undercoat, but if you really look quite closely, I might have missed bits or it may, it looks like I've missed bits. So having that gray doesn't then have the white coming through. So it's, it, it's, it's a worthwhile step of it for, you know, the 10 minutes that it takes just to quickly put a, a bit of undercoat on. Okay, <clears throat> there we go, um, that's it done. As you can see, um, I've covered the whole area. The joins that were in it, um, you can't really see anymore. Um, hopefully, I don't believe they show, they show very much. So, say it's a really good paint uh, for covering that up. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we're just gonna wait to see this to dry and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll paint it uh, for the, with the finishing touches. Right, now I come back, um, you can see now that it's dried. It's uh, very, very black. Um, so we're gonna have to uh, tone, tone this down a bit and make it a bit more realistic than uh, the black. Um, this is what uh, we're gonna aim for, which is uh, like the, um, the, the first platform we did. As you can see, it's uh, a lot lighter and more weathered than the second one. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, first of all, we're gonna um, use some powder, uh, put some powder down uh, on top. Uh, we're gonna use the Burnt Umber uh, by Vallejo. Uh, and then um, what we're gonna do is then uh, just uh, use some uh, spray, uh, some greys and uh, other browns to, to slowly uh, weather the Okay, so now we're going to, now we've put some powder down, uh, which is uh, to toned the uh, black down a bit. We're just gonna lightly spray, um, this is a black gray um, by Vallejo. Um, I'm gonna just uh, spray this over and slowly uh, tone it down a bit more. Just trying to get the uh, positioning for the um, station building. So um, you can see where the doors, um, people walk in and out and 
Uh, clearly there'll be uh, some lighter patches where the wear of people walking and um, baggage carts, etc. Been brought, brought in and out. Okay, so uh, pretty much finished weathering the second platform. It's a little darker than the first platform. Um, what I did is I, I used the neutral gray uh, paint, the uh, dark brown, mahogany, and burnt umber. And then I've uh, lightly weathered it with the powders of the burnt umber, Green Verdi, sorry, Green Earth, and the light scale gray paint. Uh, but as you can see, um, it's getting there. I think it will definitely change again once uh, I've painted the um, walls um, and, and I'll, I'll turn it down a bit more. Now that I've just peeled back the uh, masking tape off the uh, platform. It really does look much better than it did with the masking tape on it. It looks a lot cleaner. So what I'm gonna do now is put masking tape on top of what the work we've just done. So we can uh, start painting the walls and the uh, front of the edge of the platform. And then once that's done, that's uh, the weathering painting and it can go on the, um, the layout and uh, we move on to the, uh, the bridge. Okay, so I've masked off the first bit just to uh, do all the intricacy bits around the edges. And now I'm just going to tape down some paper to cover the uh, rest of the uh, platform and then we're ready to paint. Okay, so now I've finished uh, masking off the top part of the platform. I'm gonna mask off um, the wall so I can concentrate first of all on the top part of the wall. Um, which requires uh, a lot of uh, little tiny pieces of uh, green tape, uh, as you will see. Okay, as you can see, we've now masked off all the, um, the slab uh, joins. Uh, it takes a lot of time. I find masking takes probably longer than the actual painting side of it, but um, it really does come out with a nice, nice effect um, for, for, the, uh, for the project. So the color um, I've chosen to do the lines is the number 42 dark brown. Um, and uh, let's get on with it. Now, although <clears throat> no one really is gonna see the, the back, the land is uh, gonna come down just below that. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure, just in case, that you can see the lines, because I'm sure some areas you will be able to see those slabs. So um, that's pretty much it. And uh, now we remove all the masking tape for the uh, slab edges. Right, and there you have it. As you can see, the uh, lines are uh, nice and clear. So now that we've done that, we're gonna soften them all out by uh, adding different colors uh, to the top of the wall um, for weathering, uh, and that should soften those lines out. 
and it gives a really nice um, effect for the top part of the wall. So now that we've um, highlighted the uh, slabs that go along the top, we're going to weather um, the top face of the wall and also the top face of the uh, platform before we move on to the, um, the back wall and then the front wall. Okay, um, I think that's uh, about it. Um, I've clearly used a variety of uh, paint to get this effect. Um, I'll get the uh, other platform, which is right here, <laughs> and uh, have, a, have a quick look to see how we've gone. And yeah, it's, I'm pretty happy with that result. They're pretty, pretty much the same, which is, uh, which is good. Um, one of the other things I did as well to the leading edge of the platform is re-scrape um, the um, little, little lines just to uh, give them some depth as well. So uh, on that platform, so I'll just do that now as well. Right then, now that's done, I'm going to remove the masking tape from the underside of the wall to give me then access to the, uh, the rest of the wall um, and uh, we'll get that uh, sprayed up as well. Okay, to uh, start the colouring for the wall, I'm going to start off with the number 42 dark brown uh, Vallejo model air paint. That's the uh, first colour put on, and as you can see, it uh, makes a real good. It's really quite. Um, it's starting to come together. Um, if you really study the wall colours, there are a lot of different different colours, so um, that's starting to look good. Um, and now I'm just going to continue on with uh, some of these other paints and. Uh, Next colour we're going to do is the uh, yellow olive. Okay, now we've done that paint, we're just going to um, finish off with some uh, dust, um, some basically um, natural iron oxide, oxido, oxide noir, Vallejo. Again. And we'll just uh, just to bring it all together so it softens softens the, the colors in the wall just dirties it up a little bit to make it look like it's been there a little while so one thing you may see here um, is a space that I've not done that's because how the um, design is the hillside actually starts up here. So this is all going to be buried underneath in um, the earth forming material uh, later on once this gets stuck down and then all this is going to get uh, filled in and, and then basically it starts with a small wall that tapers down to this big wall that wraps around uh, the station. So that's why this hasn't been filled in. Um, it will give something for the uh, the, uh, uh, the material to uh, fix into and um, bring, bring bring the whole thing together but uh, I'm actually I think we're about done with uh, this back wall
moving on to the platform wall, we're going to start this painting. We're going to use um, five different colors. Number 42, number 12, number 55, number 13, and number 45. We're going to do them one by one, work, slowly work our way down the wall. It takes a bit of time, but uh, the effect is uh, really good. So let's uh, get on with it. So I just want to compare the first platform to the second platform, just at the halfway stage of uh, the painting. Now that we've completed the uh, front of the uh, platform, uh, in terms of all the individual bricks, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a wash with the dark yellow number 25. Uh, we're going to add a bit of water uh, and then paint that over the top of uh, all the bricks that we paint. And as you're gonna see, it's gonna seep in and uh, run down all the uh, mortar uh, cracks and it's gonna give a really nice effect for the mortar. Uh, and what we're gonna then do is uh, dab off any uh, of the bits that are on the um, stones uh, and it's gonna uh, show the fine lines of the mortar. Okay. Few drops of uh, paint. Let's uh, just mix some uh, water into it to water it down, so it can uh, run nice and freely down the uh, cracks of the uh, mortar joints. Let's apply the, uh, the run. As you can see, it uh, runs really nicely down all the mortar joints, filling them in with the uh, mortar color that we're wanting. Now that we've uh, painted over and filled in all the mortar with the, um, the, the paint, uh, we're just gonna give it a light dusting with the uh, dark yellow um, powder from Leho. That really tones down all the edges uh, and makes it um, far, makes it look like stone rather than uh, paint. This also helps bring out the uh, mortar joints as well, uh, as well as the paint that we just put on. But it really does soften soften everything off and uh, bring it bring it to life. As you can see, much softer. All right. I'm also going to touch it up with some uh, burnt umber, um, just in some areas, just to give it a bit more weathering. And last but not least, uh, the uh, carbon black. Um, clearly there would be a lot of dirt and soot um, from the steam engines. So I'm just gonna add okay, so we've got the um, one we've just completed at the bottom and the one I completed last year at the top really happy with uh, both of these and how they're going to look on the, uh, the layout. We've come to the end of this video now. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this model get brought to life and pulled together. I think it looks really great on, on the layout and I'm really looking forward to now moving on with the bridge. 
um, and uh, be sure to uh, subscribe and like the video if you, if you have, of course do. If you have any suggestions uh, on the video, if you'd like to make any comments, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you uh, at the next one. Thanks very much. If you would like to continue to see the progress of the model, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video. I'll see you next time.